Minister, twice this week, young offenders in the Parkville Detention Centre have assaulted staff, gained ac access to secure areas and used a CO2 fire extinguisher to threaten others. Under your leadership as Minister, staff in Victoria's youth detention centres are less safe at work. As a result, many experienced staff have resigned. Entry-level staff are not coping with the increased pressure, with many leaving after a short period of working. And I therefore ask, Minister, what action is the government taking to ensure staff are safe at work in Victoria's youth detention centres? Minister. President, I thank uh, Mr Davis for his question. I must from the outset reject the premise of Mr Davis's questions. Uh, there's quite a number of inaccuracies there. Uh, but what I will say is I might take this opportunity to acknowledge our hard-working, dedicated staff in our youth justice system. They are very, very hard-working and very committed. It's one of the privileges of this role to go out to our custodial facilities and our youth justice facilities and meet the dedicated staff on the front line, making a difference. In relation to staff uh, safety, every Victorian worker deserves to feel safe. No government in the history of this state has done more, whether it be manslaughter laws, whether it be wage theft laws, in our, specific to youth justice, laws regarding emergency services workers and people in our youth justice system. Any assault on staff is unacceptable. And incidents where there are, inc where there are incidents take place, they appropriately refer to Victoria Police. I can say that we have a zero tolerance approach to these kind of incidents. And you know, Mr Davis, I can't get into individual incidents because they involve young people and staff. And many of them, as I've said, are referred to Victoria Police. And we don't want to prejudice that process. Those investigations need to be take place without interference, political interference. Uh, but we will continue to support our staff. You asked a question about what we're doing. We have a number of initiatives in, in place at Cherry Creek and at Parkville. Individual counselling available to staff, psychological support, peer support programs, health and safety training and reporting systems. Work collaboratively with all partners across government to ensure we have the safest possible workplace. Work collaboratively with their industrial representative, their union. We work collaboratively with WorkSafe. We work, work collaboratively with the Ombudsman. We want to make our system as safe and as best possible for everyone in our system. That means the, also the staff. It also means the young people in custody. It means the community is kept safer. We'll continue to do that work, and we've invested more than any government has previously. Mr Davis, supplementary. Uh, thank you, Pre President. I think the Minister is in denial. Um, and, and I therefore ask, Minister, young people continue to gain access to secure areas at Parkville and Cherry Creek. They overpower staff and steal access cards, putting the entire system at risk of further riots or, as we've seen in the past, revenge attacks between gangs like the one that left a young person with life-changing injuries. And, Minister, I ask, why has your department denied that the serious allegations took place and will it take a young person or staff member to die before you act and put in place security measures that guarantee the protection of hard-working staff and ensure the delivery of your duty of care to youths in detention as well? Minister. Thank you, President. I thank Mr Davis for a supplementary question. I won't get into specifics, but what I will say is recent incidents have been resolved safely and there has been no physical injuries to anybody. But nonetheless, understanding the majority of young people that come in contact with the criminal justice system are diverted away successfully, 95 per cent. And you can look at all the statistics you like. We do a good job in Victoria of early intervention and diversion. But so the young people that end up in custodial facilities, and as Minister, I don't decide who enters into our custodial facil facilities or for how long they're with us. But when they come into our custody, we try addressing their behavioural issues. We make investments in addressing the underlying behaviour, which means we're all safer in the long term. That means the staff are safer. That means the community is safer. That means their, I mean, their families are safer. But of course, it is a complex environment. We don't shy away from, from that. We stand together and work closely with our staff. And for our investments in infrastructure, through better training, we will continue to support the staff to make sure the system is as safe as possible. We'll continue to do that work whilst you keep talking down the system. But the system is a much better place than what it was when you were in lasting government.